everybody. Dutch Sense here. 4.50 p.m. Central Time on Wednesday, February 27th, 2013. And I've got you over here on my website. I want to go ahead and give a big shout out to Tattooed1009 for letting me know about this yesterday. This is breaking news regarding Harp up in Alaska and a discovery, a release discovery that was made by the Naval Research Laboratories released two days ago now. So let me just go ahead and take you through this here really quick so you can understand the significance of what I'm getting ready to read you. Now, for the last two years, I've been under severe criticism from multiple critics about what I've called harp rings, and these are really radar pulses in the high-frequency band coming from ground-based stations. That's why I named them harp rings. But uh, radar pulse rings, harp rings, and I've got a huge, huge list of all the documented harp rings that I've documented and other people have. And I'll put a link down below to this so you guys can scroll through and see past examples of what we're talking about here. But for the longest time, people said it could not be done. Radio frequency could not be used to generate any kind of plasma in the atmosphere or in the ionosphere, and that it was solely for research purposes. Well, the U.S. Naval Labs have basically admitted, as of yesterday, that they were able to generate a multiple kilometer wide plasma bubble and sustain it for over an hour using 1.44 megahertz to 4.34 megahertz. And they give the resonance, they give the frequency. Now this is important because NEXRAD radar, let me take you back over here, NEXRAD radar, my original observation was that high frequency pulses were being emitted from ground-based radars, which were having a weather effect, a heating effect around the area. And people said it couldn't be done. Well, it turns out NEXRAD pulses from 0 to 12.4 megahertz, anywhere in between 0 and 12.4 megahertz. Now, we're talking here 0 to 4.34 megahertz, so it falls within the spectrum, the pulse frequency. This is proved. Here it is. The U.S. Naval Research Labs have done it, and they did it using the billion-watt facility up at HARP. Now, that's over a very large area that's generated very high up in the atmosphere. Now, what we're seeing here with radar, radar works at about 750,000 watts after it goes through the klystron tubes, 750,000 peak watts. And so we're looking at smaller versions of the same facility. And they talk about it, the circular appearance of what appears here, and they even are able to image it on their radar, which is slightly different than the weather radar that we see standard civilian-wise. I urge you guys to come over and read this whole article. If you have previously thought that this was impossible, or if you're a skeptic that said it couldn't be done, you definitely need to read this and understand that they just announced a day ago that they did it. Using HARP in conjunction with observations through radar. So you can see HARP on radar. That's something else that I want to take you guys through really quick. I'm going to take you over to my other HARP post. This has been up since April, and I've added to it continuously with more information as it's become available. So we've got TV shows talking about it. We have different facility locations talking about it. Um, Let me take you down to the bottom of the post here where I've added the most recent information. And the other discovery that we made a month ago now is that radar devices are used as quote-unquote heaters. And they're doing it over the North Pole, for instance, from a place called SPEAR, S-P-E-A-R. And they're able to project a radar frequency... Here's a diagram from their site showing super darn radar at the peripherals. Then you've got your spear radar at the center pointing up to a spot where they cause massive heating. But we're talking upwards of five to 8,000 degrees they're able to generate. From that, they also have found that radar itself, when it goes up and disturbs the ionosphere, gives its own resonant signal that appears in the shape of a circle. Okay, and they show it here. Here's a diagram here. So I urge you folks, please, if you're skeptical on this, go read through the information. You'll see we are not exaggerating this at all. The U.S. military is now acknowledging that they're able to do it using HARP. And we found, of course, documents that show radar is used in conjunction with HARP to do the same thing in the S and C band. Here's an example right here where they were able to do simulation lightning experiments with induced plasma using the MIT S band and C band UHF radars. Okay, so there's a a perfect document from 1994 showing all the way back in 94 they were doing it. Now, one final thing. If you scroll down through here, when you get down to the bottom of all these pictures, I've got hundreds of them, you'll see pictures going back to the late 90s, which we pulled from Thomas Bearden's old archived site, which no longer exists. It turns out 
Thomas Bearden, back in the late 90s, was documenting the same radar ring phenomenon. And no one knew about it because he had it backed up on his old site that no one could go on. Now that it's in archives, we're able to go through it and actually save the images. And so just keep scrolling down. You'll see several images from the late 90s going into the early 2000s that show you time after time the same thing that we're experiencing now. And what we're seeing are basically frequency pulses that are causing plasma to be induced or ionization before plasma actually appears an electrical static buildup that occurs most likely because the ionization turns into cloud condensation nuclei CCN it may be unintentional what they're doing with the radar or originally was unintentional and from that they figured out that they could do it and now it's done on a daily basis almost across the continental United States and we've seen very severe weather very very strong storms develop from these things okay so I hope that takes you through it guys again go read the article I'll link it down below all the information is down below if you have any questions go ahead and post them in the comment field and I want to give a big congratulations to all the people over the last two years who stuck with it who didn't just believe the quote-unquote professionals who said it couldn't be done the radar professionals over at Metabunk for instance or any one of these other skeptic sites that said a year ago this could not be done well so much for the professionals and the talking heads this is why you can't take their word for it you have to look into it yourself okay we saw something strange appearing on radar over many months and they denied it and said it couldn't be done and it was just background clutter and they gave every explanation in the book for what they said it could be except for the obvious which is a pulse appearing over a city which then a storm comes and hits that pulse within two to three days it's undeniable. They accused me of photoshopping this stuff. They accused me of hoaxing this stuff. And it's not a hoax. It's not a photoshop. The rings really do appear, and storms really do go towards the center of the rings within two to three days. Okay? And I hope that answers some questions, guys. You'll really enjoy a lot of these pictures because they are very high detailed, and you can go and verify whether or not storms hit these areas within a certain amount of time. That's the other thing. All the date and time stamps are down below. You can see which ones were hits, which ones were misses, etc. Much love. Hang in there.